Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel, and today's video I've got a confession to make. Like, well, I've had two confessions to make. This mug is empty, it's just for show. Got it from my wife. Thanks, hon. Uh, anyway, let's put it safe down there. Second confession, and that's really what this video is going to be about, just a little bit. As a game developer, I don't play a lot of games currently, the last couple of years actually. I just find it very hard to find time to play games. And um, I think I should play more games as a game developer. Let, let's, like it's um, from playing other people's games, I can get a lot of inspiration and I used to get a lot of inspiration from those games. Weird story, told it a few times on the channel, but if you're new to the channel, welcome. Gunslux, like a chaotic platform roguelike arcadey game, got a lot of inspirations from the racing game Split Second on the PlayStation. When I was playing that and everything was exploding and you could destroy everything, I wanted something like that, just smaller in a neat little package that became Gunslux. Uh, vibrant colors, a lot of explosion. It just, um, inspiration can come from weird little things in other people's games. This week, I started playing Marvel Snap, uh, pretty much because my social media was full of it, everybody was talking about it, and a lot of people said it was a surprisingly a positive experience. I normally don't play games like that, but it was surprisingly a very positive experience. I really enjoyed it, been playing it almost every day now, a couple of rounds. Um, it might also be the fact that I keep winning. That might be just an algorithm they implemented but the game gave me a couple of uh, little inspirational things that I moved over to Regulated City and implemented this week. So that's one of the things and um, I should just play more games. And I have a lot of Steam games as well, but my computer setup is up here and in the evenings when I'm done working, I'm usually downstairs and I don't play Steam downstairs and I just have to figure out a good way. And I use the Switch every now and then, but I don't have that many good games on the Switch or games that interest me. The ones, uh, the few I had, I have played them and, and done with them. Last one was Shredder's Revenge. I also took some inspiration from that into Regulator City. So um, I should just play more games. That is the conclusion. But for now, after the intro, we're gonna talk about the new stuff that I've been adding to Regulator City. Some of that based on Marvel Snap. The first thing I added to Regulator City this week is um, finally figured out what to do with HQ, the headquarters. I mentioned it a few times in last week's video. Of course, I talked about all the cool stuff and all the problems I solved and finally have this game on track. But HQ was still a bit of a mystery to me. I had this sort of a base for your players, but it had no function at all in the game. Had some rough ideas, but didn't pursue those. Also, if you hear a lot of noise, it started raining extremely loud. Sadly, I can't help it. I have no control over the rain. Now, a few weeks ago, I talked about Herogashi on the Discord. He has released Astral Flux, and one of the first reviews, as predicted, was a very uh, was a negative one. Not extremely negative, but a little bit negative. But one of the things in that review from the player mentioned uh, the game had no hub. I get it. Now that we have Hades and a couple of other games adding hubs to their roguelike situation, some players suddenly think that every roguelike should have a hub, which is of course doesn't make sense. Uh, we never missed it before, but now that a couple of games had it, don't expect it to appear in every game. Having said that, my HQ is now a hub, pretty much. I, I guess I was already working on it being a hub, but that guy mentioning it and me looking up uh, ways that other games use it. Yeah, HQ will be a sort of a hub for you. So what this means is that the HQ now will have um, NPC characters pretty much. Uh, we have a general, which is the first person there, the only person, and he will explain a little bit of what's going on, which also solves that problem, um, having a little story set up, and then you can start um, 
playing your mission. You can, of course, ignore the general completely. It's going to be mostly very optional to the player. Um, if, ignore it if you want and just move on to the missions. But we will also be adding the hostages that you rescued to this hub, or at least those of the last two missions. We don't want to flood it with NPCs. So as soon as you have a mission that you completed and you save the hostage, you might want to go check the HQ. The hostage will be there and he might have some information for you. Maybe he'll also provide you with something or maybe unlock like a special mission. Things like that will now be able and possible in the hub. Also, as soon as you unlock some sort of information or technology stuff or uh, did an intelligence mission, you might be able to go to the hub and there will be a scientist who took that intelligence and learned stuff from it and will tell you come back in one or two missions and I'll have a new weapon for you. Things like that will be happening in the hub, which really HQ has now a real good purpose. I just need to uh, make it a more interesting layout because the hub is, or HQ is pretty much, uh, yeah, it just need to uh, redesign the whole level and add a little bit more to it. And we'll also be able to uh, heal the player or, or upgrade the player in some sort of way as soon as you unlock stuff in the mission, go back to the hub and use it to upgrade yourself or one of your teammates, something like that. I haven't figured it all out yet, but we now have NPCs in the game, which uh, they look pretty cool. I just uh, created a couple of heads and I will be creating a couple of more just to have more variation in there. But so far, so good. And that brings me to uh, the inspiration I got from Marvel Snap. When you play cards in the game, they have uh, three areas that you play and those areas have little um, modifications on how your game cards will be played out or used. So it might be in turn five, you can't place game cards like this or every card you place here will be um, counted, but then destroyed so that you'll have always uh, infinite room to play cards. Anyway, these modifiers, I am really liking the game, but these modifiers gave me the idea to do that to our missions in Regulated City. I don't have a huge amount of missions. Uh, I can come up with a few more that we have right now, but I can't come up with an endless list to keep it interesting until like, 30 missions into the game. So what these, um, well, I don't want to, I call them modifiers on the Discord, but then people thought, well, I also want to play the pure mission. And when will that happen? Will I always run into these modifiers? It's the wrong word. I don't see it as a modifier. It's a variation on the mission. So there will be a mission of a rescue. That mission will always be a you trying to save a hostage, but that mission now has a second part to it. That's the variation. And it might be um, only two of your team members go in. So your team is cut in half. And it might also be that the enemies in the building have doubled their HP. Or um, if you save this hostage in your first try, you will gain two HP extra. Things like that will make the missions more interesting to play and tackle it in a different way. Especially if you only have one team member or two team members instead of four, you might want to take more care or if the enemy is a lot stronger than you you might also uh, bring some other weapons or something. So uh, this will helpfully add a little bit of tactics back to the game, but also a lot of variation because these modify these variations on the missions will just have you play the game differently in a lot of different ways. And a hostage mission will never be the same because it will always be a little bit different, especially uh, you have a different building. Uh, there will be more buildings added, but now you also have variations and you might have to play it in a very different way. You might not have your superpowers, you might not have your dodge moves, you might have only a melee weapon. We can go on with a bunch of variations and that will all be done to these missions. So if we have 10 missions and then I have like 20 variations, you do the math because it's early and I don't want to do it, but there's a lot of variation there. Yeah. So uh, the final thing I added and I need to tweak a little bit. It's just a little thing that I was working on. Let me uh, activate it. And start the game plugin. So one of the things I had in the game, but I kind of removed it was um, instead of you entering a mission through the street, let me lower the volume. 
you could also enter a mission through the roof. Uh, it wasn't working anymore, but I fixed it all so it just looks cool again. Let's just uh, enter a building and uh, enter it from the roof. I still like how this uh, works and looks and now it all works. I also added some parallax to the skyline and fixed some things. A lot of stuff, this stuff wasn't working anymore because I changed so much code and never looked after uh, the roof access. So now we got it all working and you, it's a bit weird that there are multiple doors on the roof. But yeah, that's just how it now works with these mission structures. And we got the roof, we got the pigeons, we got enemies, we got missions. And I'm very happy that this is back into the game, which leaves me with the sewer. We also had a sewer entrance that needs to be fixed as well. So um, lots of stuff happening this week again. I also been working on my mystery project that I can't talk about. Well, I can't talk about it. I just can't mention anything about it. You know, the secret box I had a few weeks ago and everything that's coming with that. I made some progress on that as well. And this game, I'm very excited about this game, but the other project, I might just be even more excited about it. I just can't talk about it until I'm further into the process of all of that. So I should stop talking before I say things that I, that spoil it, but yeah. All right, um, that's it for this week's video. Um, lots of stuff coming. Regulated City is going in the right direction. Uh, still a few weeks left in this year. I want to have it done or um, come up with a way to have it make money in January, February. So either a Kickstarter or a publisher or early access or game funding or gonna try some stuff and see what happens. So I'm hyperactive again. I'm sorry, I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you think about all these things. And of course, drop on the Discord if you wanna talk about these things during the week. It, these videos are once a week, but um, while I'm working every day, I'm also on the Discord and I often show stuff that I'm working on or thinking about and people can chime in and just uh, give their opinions. And I ignore them completely, but sometimes I listen to them because they are gamers and they usually know more than me and more people usually know more than one person anyway. So. Hyperactive, I know. I'm quitting now. Bye. No, really, I'm ending the video here. Um, thanks for watching. Now I'm turning it off.